Well, investors aren't giving thanks for what's been going on on Wall Street this year. And with the Federal Reserve set to hike rates again next month, are we looking at more pain before things turn around? Let's uh, talk to our all-star money panel. Melissa Aramo is with us along with Scott Martin. Scott, I'll start with you. Uh, 2022 has been one of the roughest years in history, maybe the roughest by some accounts when you started to talk about stocks and bonds, both being uh, devastated to this degree. Any light at the end of the tunnel? There's some. Uh, the problem is the tunnel's really close by, so the light is probably going to be a little dimmer than maybe we'd hope because it didn't start early enough. Um, but you're right, Charles, a little souvenir of a terrible year is 2022. But that means good things going forward, if you can believe it. I'm always kind of a positive guy. And I think there's some positive things going on with respect to future expectation of S&P returns, which are going to go up because we've had such a down year. It reverts to the mean over time. So that's a good thing. And also the fact, too, Charles, as we've seen with this recessionary take that's out there, whether it's the companies, the analysts, consumers, et cetera, people on TV, um, the reality is this. The fact that companies are cutting jobs, they've cut outlook, consumers have cut spending, those are kind of the last steps to the end of the recession. So where we go from here is likely up. It just may take a little while, but I don't think it gets much worse. Well, let's see. You, you don't agree. <laughs> <laughs> She's shaking her head. No, yeah, no I don't saying, agree. She's saying you didn't Good. get anything right. <laughs> saying that my time frame is a little bit different than Scott's. So I think we have more downside. You're a lot younger too, so you can afford that extra time. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I basically think that we're not going to see any changes until possibly after the next presidential election. So we're talking two, two years. years out. And I, I'm going to say it right here, I don't think the market makes another brand new all-time high in 2023. So we would be two consecutive years when we were so bullish for so long from really even 2016 up to 2022. And that's shocking for people people, even that we didn't make new highs this year. What is the reason we're going to rally? Give me one reason. I mean, come well, on. Scott, Scott just talked about a few things. He thinks, first of all, it's overdone. Valuations have come down. The market's made adjustments. Businesses are making adjustments. So we'll go to this little trough at the beginning of next year where earnings are down year over year, and then they start to pick back up. Would the market move ahead of something like that? No, because again, the Fed is going to raise rates. They're going to keep up their pace. They're not going to back off. If anything, they're going to overcorrect this time around because they know that they kept rates too low for too long. So everyone is cheering up and down that the market rallied the last two weeks because they think that the Fed is only going to raise them 25 basis points or half. It's going to probably be 75, and then we're going to sell off and have a dip in December and then maybe a eke out a Christmas rally towards the end of the year, Christmas, New Year's Eve rally. And again, overall, you're going to look at this year and you're going to say, oh, my God. Gosh, where, where we started the year from where we're down more than 100 points on both the QQQs right, and the right. SPY, which is devastating for long-term investors, particularly people that are in retirement, sure, actually. Sure, Like I said, the 60-40 portfolio, uh, this is the worst year ever for that. But, you know, we, we always these conversations, Scott, always come back to the Federal Reserve, right? And we are hearing some members of the Fed a little less hawkish than, than Jay Powell was the last time we heard him. Right now, Wall Street sees... More rate hikes to Melissa's points, but they see rate cuts some point next year, a couple of cuts, which to me indicates they're going to crack the economy, overdo it to her point, and once they realize that, they'll become more accommodative with the market rally and something like that. Exactly. The market always preempts stuff like that. It always preempts the economic recovery because it's a forward-looking indicator. And in my old age, I forget about the times yeah. when uh, the Fed actually cuts rates, Charles. But remember, that's a huge boon to markets. And Melissa's right. Like, the, the, the sentiment is exactly what she noted. But, guys, when the sentiment goes this far, when everybody knows something is going to happen... It probably won't happen. So I'm just telling you, the boat is getting loaded to the side of everybody saying another down year next year, blah, blah, blah. Even if we get an 8% average annual return year as typical for the S&P 500 next year, that's still a positive number from where we were this year. So I think that outlook, Charles, alongside the Fed, alongside all those downgrades and earnings means we go up from here. Real quick, we've got a minute and a half. I want to switch gears a little bit here, Melissa, to the FTX uh, saga. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's ugly. It involves a lot of key players, a lot of famous people, a lot of rich people, political donations, political influencing. This has everything. I mean, what do you make of it? I think it's terrible because obviously a lot of regular normal people lost money and they buy into this, they buy into the hype and then you have celebrities out there now, they're getting paid on social media to do these advertisements to, on Instagram, on Facebook. It's actually a way that people are making money now that are famous and I think it hurt regular investors. You can't believe everything you see because just because it's a celebrity that's endorsing right. something right. that it's necessarily true. And it'll be interesting to see if really something happens with this, what the outcome is. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of layers to this. 
this, Scott? Uh, and listen, I, I know the celebrities, the Tom Brady's of the world, you may be not a crypto expert, but there were some <laughs> financial people, who, very smart, that <laughs> did, did, did nothing to help this along, and regulators, regulators? that looked the other way. <laughs> And maybe even politicians. we still got to sniff that out because mm -hmm. millions of dollars are sprinkled into that last election. Where do you see it going? Oh, I mean, this, the fallout of this could be massive, Charles. Uh, where it's going is, man, maybe nowhere in the sense of, like, this stuff keeps happening over and over again just in kind of a different tenor. The one thing I have to ask, though, too, is where is Sam Bankman? I mean, we haven't seen the guy. We don't even know exactly where he is. We got to bring him in somewhere and get a talking to. I mean, the fact that this thing is going on and on and they're finding out more and more, we know this is bad. Let's get the guy in here, get him incarcerated, get him at least a talking to, you know, an interview, something, and figure out how bad it really goes. Because you're right, all the political influence and everybody that's at the higher levels that got involved with this yeah. is stark. Yeah, it really, really is. It really makes these things, remember, Madoff. It makes even Madoff, like, that, that, it's dwarfed yep. now by when yeah. you have things like this. The, the scale that these things happen on now. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Guys, thank you both very much. Uh, great seeing you both, Melissa and Scott. Well, with temperatures cooling down, the